good morning greeting from trishla foundation my dear friends our parents family members of the children with cerebral palsy trishla foundation has started a series of talk on different aspect of cerebral palsy as we all know that cerebral palsy is very very difficult problems occur in small kids which occurring due to damage of the brain in the mother uterus after birth and during the birth cerebral palsy children can have multiple disabilities and every parents can't go to many faculties and specialists to take treatments so it is better to have a knowledge about each and every aspect of cerebral palsy and it has been proven and seen that parents who know everything about his child can manage in much better way that child can have the good recovery it also proven that with early intervention by good modalities of intervention and treatment if done by the parents have the good outcome now first talk i will start on the basic concept basic science in cerebral palsy as you know in world total 15 million cases are here with cerebral palsy or the similar incidence in nearly every part of the world is there but in developing countries it is mostly due to the problem of the mother in anc problems and during the delivery along with the genetic problem which is the commonest cause in developed countries cerebral palsy occur in 2 to 3 live birth in 1000 children but it has been seen that children who born with very very less weight more than less than 1.5 kg and before the 7 month of the age there is chances increase up to 11% in india the total approximate number of the cerebral palsy affected population is nearly about 3 million that is 30 lakhs and it is the commonest cause of physical and neuromuscular disorder in children why what is the cerebral palsy there is a permanent disorder of movement and posture due to non progressive disturbance in the immature brains from prenatal period to 3 years of postnatal periods it's not a disease it is a complex problem you can say that it is a syndrome it is a group of neuromotor disorder which comprises a motor dysfunction disturbance of the senses perception cognition communication behavioral epilepsy hearing speech immunity and lots more problems it is a lifelong condition that affects child for whole life because of that whole family is going to affected the severity of lesion depend upon the site and extent of the lesion in the brains but we know that brain injury is static it is not progressive but there is no possibility a very very rare possibility of regeneration of the brain tissues so we should know that regeneration of brain tissues is not possible by any means and disability can be static progressive regressive depending upon the what kind of the treatment you are given and what are the environment of this child where uh, he or she has been taken care in the family situations the spectrum presentation ranges from the clumsiness in the gait to severe disability that means they looking like children is normal on the other hand child may be very very severe and on the completely on the bed he is not able to move his body and the cerebral palsy can present in different varieties of manner we will discuss uh, we will discuss in next part of this lectures now we should like to know that what is the reasons of brain insult before birth it can be occur due to the intrauterine infection the lots of drug is giving during the pregnancy there is teratogenic drugs toxemia in which mother can have the high grade uh, hypertension and other epilepsy damage placenta poor mater maternal nutrition and blood group incompatibility which occur with the negative blood groups during birth it can occur due to the prematurity and low birth weight there is brain is totally immature and with slight oxygen deficiency that can damage the brains 
neonatal asphyxia is same thing carnitex means they see high bilirubin level at the time of birth it occur because of rs blood group incompatibilities septicemia means infection and respiratory distress syndrome and even it is very very common in multiple births after birth child brain can be affected by the head injuries infection and critical illness other causes are very very co common causes are genetic chromosomal anomalies congenital malformations all these reasons are the cause of lesion in the brain which causes the multiple symptom that in the group called as cerebral palsy now we should like to know that is what the pathology in the brain pathology in the brain you can see on the mri different finding first finding is damage to the white matter of the brain whiter ma matter of the brain means deepest part of the brain which is near the ventricle that is known as periventricular leukomalacia pbl second thing is abnormal developmental of the brain that brain part is not developed fully as in normal children and third problem is the bleeding hemorrhage in the brain which occur due to the weak vessels in the brains hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy due to the lack of oxygen during delivery that occurring in the decreased amount to the brains this three four pathology is very very common in the brain which causes the cerebral palsy in the brain we have different areas which function for the different function of the bodies sensory problem and motor issues are to the near the central part that is the both side of the ventricles behavioral problem occur due to the lesion in the frontal problems hearing problem occur because of lesion in the temporal regions and vision is the mainly part of the uh, back part of the hind brains and ataxia occurring because of the back and lower part that is known as a cerebellum and dyskinesia occur because of the brain stem and which is a central part of the brain which is going into the spinal cords now we should also like to know that what are the associated medical problem that is very very important because most of the our parents are focusing only on the ability to walk ability to sit ability to uh, take food but lots of other associated medical problem is there if we're not taking care of that associated medical problem child will not have good quality of life as you know convulsion means epilepsy which is very very common problem the cerebral palsy it occur in 50 percent of the children that should be treated along with the other problems and treatment and drugs given by the neurologist should be continued for years according to their advice and those should be titrated according to weight and age of the child 60 percent of the children will have the sensory problem sensory problem in different sensation which goes on our bodies like the touch temperature vision auditory touch, uh, that is a taste bud develop in the body that is very very important and there is balancing also that is a proprioceptive uh, receptor all these sensory issues should be primarily be treated to manage the physical disability of the child third common problem is the speech impairment because of that this communication become very very difficult this speech problem occurring in the 40 percent of the children and that should be also be managed at the age of one to two year of age so that early speech intervention can give good outcome in long terms mental retardation initially it was cerebral palsy was taken as the mental retardation but now know that only 40 to 50 percent children can have different grade of the mental retardation only 20 to 30 percent will have severe grade that means 50 percent 50 to 60 percent child will have the normal iq so that all these children with the normal iq should be admitted in mainstream school but only with the severe mental retardation should go to the special school because of that they will have the good development of the uh, there is mental capability as well as the their personalities visual defect is also found in the most uh, of the children that is only 10 percent children that occur because of many reason the reason can be in the eye reason can be in the brain and reason can be in uh, mid pathway and even as a refractive error and is can be one of the cause for the visual problems cerebral palsy children and 
there is retinopathy of prematurity that occurring to the damage of the retina because of lack of oxygen that should be managed in very very early part of the life that is up to three months of the age and should be recognized as very very early and most of the child also have the pure immunities because they go, don't go outside and they not uh, exposed to the different environment so immunity is not developed properly and also because of the chest muscle is weak they get repeatedly chest in congestions the child can have the sleeping disorder also along with behavioral abnormality sleeping disorder also occur because of many reason just like that child kind of the pain have constipation he is crying because of that different tone pattern problem in these children and also because of epilepsy so that sleeping disorder causes should be recognized and should be managed early so that they can have the good sleep in the night so in daytime can have the good activities and physical exercises behavioral abnormality not the primary abnormality the cerebral palsy children that can be associated because of associated autism and other problem and mostly it occur because of surrounding not uh, good environment just like poking from the other person the families and societies and not cooperating with the other peer groups so behavioral abnormality should not be developed in the cerebral palsy children because all these children with cerebral palsy have good iq they can understand each and everything so parents should not talk about negative things in front of the child because child know each and everything what you are talking in front of them so that they can develop behavioral abnormality in long terms child can have a growth retardation malnourishment and even some child can have the obesities some child have the less energy expenditure have the more diet intake because of that they can develop the obesity is an obesity is also developed by the hypothyroidism so that nutrition balanced diet should be given to all these children this not more weight not less weight is important for the cerebral palsy children cerebral palsy children should maintain normal weight for their age as per their requirements and nourishment should be very very normal these children because of spasticity occurring in the whole body they can also occur in the gastrointestinal tract because of that and even in the oropharyngeal muscle is weak because of that they have a feeding problem gastrointestinal reflux so that they omit repeatedly after eating the food every times they can also develop the constipation and constipation should be treated and managed very very early with all desi means just like the food quality and increasing the fiber amount in the foods and even they can have the dental problem because after every feeds they keep the food inside the mouth and they are not able to take inside the esophagus so every time after feed the teeth brushing should be mandatory in cerebral palsy children and this is very very important before going to sleeps now we would like to discuss the type of the cerebral palsy how they present what are the problems cerebral palsy children can have the cerebral palsy children have the movement disorder and different type of the tone patterns uh, because of that they can have present in four varieties first is the spastic variety that is commonest it can present in 70 to 80% of the children second variety is dyskinesia dyskinesia is also a different variety like atetosis chorea choreatetosis and dystonia and ataxic variety and mixed variety in mixed variety two different type of the uh, cerebral palsy can present in way and most common combination is dystonic and spastic city and this cerebral palsy affection can affect whole body can affect the single limb of the body uh, depending upon that patterns we know that hemiplegia means one side of the body is affected diplegics means both lower limb is affected more and upper limb is less affected in quadriplegics both upper and lower limb is affected upper limb is affected more than the lower limbs and triplegics means one upper limb and both lower limbs so depending upon this we can identify the which limb how much they are affected and how much severity is there now we will talk about the spastic cerebral palsy what is spastic cerebral palsy spastic cerebral palsy means the children will have the spastic muscles what is spastic muscle means 
continuous muscle spasm and contracture when 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 they want to work this muscle is in spasm and that not being the relax during the activities and during the rest also they will have the jerky movement muscle tightness and joint stiffness and because of that they will have the abnormal gait pattern just like a crouch gait but means the bending of the knee jump knee gait that means heel is not touching the ground and knee is bent and third variety is scissoring gait even his leg is crossed to each other because of the tightness is the adductor and uh, hamstring group of the muscle in long term up to seven to eight years this is possibility converted the muscle because muscle is a short they become contractor for the long period and ultimately muscle contracture develop because of muscle contracture and abnormal muscle forces joint become contracted and joint deformity develop and because of the abnormal forces in the muscle bony deformity joint dislocation can also occur and with this uh, finding there is limited stretchability of the muscle will be there and also there will be poor coordination and control of the mo muscle movement will be also be affected now we would like to know what are the sensory motor problem how we start managing these children with spastic cerebral palsy primarily we know as the child is born he will be the flappy or normal or increased tone in the body as the child increases there in their age up to the eight year age one year age groups they will develop certain pattern of the movement disorders and primary impairment is sensory defective sensory input that means sensation going into the body to the brain is defective because of that they develop the abnormal motor outcomes and loss of selective motor control loss of selective motor control means they cannot able to differentiate the smaller function of the that particular muscle group just like we wanted to do we ask the child to flex the finger but because he is not able to flex the finger he will flex the whole upper extremity then he will able to do fine motor activities because of that fine motor activity is going to be disturbed and there will be difficulty in coordinated and alternative movement in the bodies and most important part in the sensory motor problem is issue of the balance and equilibrium because of uh, why it is occurring it occur because of problem in the proprio sens sensation which is going to the body that uh, give signal to the body how to make balance how to make equilibrium because of that child will have the difficulty in keeping the body in anti gravity posture and it will very very difficult to maintain and walk in good patterns and also there will be abnormal muscle tone this is the primary primary problem that is spasticity rigidity hypotonia and fluctuating tone in the atherotic cerebral palsy and also there is very very important part is the muscle weakness muscle weakness in cerebral palsy occur because of two three reasons one reason is it less amount of the brain impulse going into the brain, uh, muscles which is going to perform second part is less used by the extremities third problem occurring because of the antagonistic muscle which is this spastic because of that one group of the muscle is not able to function and because of that that group of the muscle will be weakened down now this was the primary impairment in the primary impairment we all know now that this is abnormal movements abnormal sensory inputs abnormal muscle weakness and loss of selective motor control if it persists for the long duration they will develop the secondary impairments secondary impairment means if spasticity persists for long duration muscle will shorten muscle will have the contracture because of that joint and bony deformity will occur abnormal growth will be occurring there and that will be fixed if persisted for the long duration that will need surgical correction primary impairment can be managed by the brace and good therapy programs but secondary impairment can't be managed by the brace and therapy now come to the tertiary impairments tertiary impairments it adaptive mechanism because child will adopt to the function which is the problem occurring in the child if child is very very functioning just take a example if the child has a corners gait pattern because of a corners 
he has a good uh, balance in the body, he is able to walk, he has to put the forces on the leg, because of that knee will go on the back side, so child will develop genuine curvatum, that means knee is hyperextended and if it persisted for the long duration, it is very very difficult to manage genuine curvatum, as well as the other problem is like the plano valgus feet, because when the aquanus gate is there, child is putting the uh, load on the limbs and with long term persisted of the corners gate, foot is going out to, outside, that is you known the tertiary impairment. In tertiary impairment, there will be permanent changes in the joint and the bone, so that it should be prevented at every cost, we should not happening the tertiary impairment, because we don't have much treatment for tertiary impairment, only we can manage we can manage it, but we can't correct every part of the tertiary impairment, but we can manage each and everything in secondary impairments. Now, we should also like to know one basic example is mass reflex. It means mass reflex in the whole body is acting together. As you know, whenever it is sound occurring in the rooms and the child is spastic or dystonic, child is shaking like the whole body started shaking. That is because occurring because of the mass reflex. And we know in body, when we born, we always have the primitive reflexes. Lots of primitive reflexes occur in the body during the birth, but at a certain period of the time, this primitive reflex, which is of no, no use for our body, get disappear at three months, six months, one year. But in cerebral palsy, these primitive reflexes get persisted for the long duration. So that in very, very early age of the life, we should work upon that, so that this secondary uh, primary reflexes get corrected and get converted in the body, in the normal functioning, so that we can utilize these uh, reflexes in normal, more normal ways. Just for example, when one child is standing, he is dropping his limb on one side and just a severely affected child, when one side of the limb is rotated, the neck is also rotated on that side and that becomes the dystonic pattern in the cerebral palsy. Third problem is in coordination between the agonist and antagonist. And agonist and antagonist means one side of the joint is the agonist and other side of the muscle is the antagonist. And whenever there is the rigidity and sparsity, sometime the both muscle is working together. So that whenever we wanted to perform an action in the flexion, the extension muscle is also working together so that we are not able to perform the normal function in more normal ways. And there is another problem with the absence of voluntary control. We don't have voluntary control on our muscle so that we are not able to perform the activity whatever we wanted to do in more normal and smooth fashions. Now, we will discuss about the muscle tone. As we have always worried about the muscle tone in the cerebral palsy. Muscle tone is good for everything. If we don't have muscle tone, our body will be the floppy, we will not be able to do any activities. But if hypertonia is there, rigidity is there, that is also harmful. The normal tone is required for every person, but we can manage spastic variety in much better way, but very very difficult to manage in rigidity and dystonic varieties of the muscle tones. Muscle weakness I have discussed with you, and now come to the physical and mental uh, fatigues. Physical fatigue, why it occurring? Because the muscle weakness is there, not, not a much brain impulse is coming, coming to our body for performing the normal function in the cerebral palsy and there is this coordination in the muscle is not there. Because of that, the child can develop the physical fatigue if working for the long duration. Some child can fatigue even walking in the 10 meter, other child is fatigue in walking up to the 500 meter, so that we should look after at what distance and what time child is going to fatigue, child should not be left fatigue, because of that child will not take interest in walking and child can have the problem in long term, so that they should be given the assistive devices like a, like a walking aid, a stick, elbow crutches, walker or wheelchairs. Other mental fat, uh, fatigue is mental fatigues. Why mental fatigue occur in cerebral palsy children? As I discussed earlier, in the cerebral palsy children, more than 50% children have the normal IQs. They can understand everything. They can, cannot communicate to us 
what their feeling is there but they can understand our feeling what we are thinking about this that child if you are poking and giving negative feeling about the child and always pressure to do and do and do do this thing that child will feel more fatigue that child will not able to do their uh, maximum ability performance so child so that child should also be given the time for the play and other recreational activity so say they feel part of the society part of the family never bothered about the pressure from the family members and parents <coughs> and very very important part and functioning of the academic activities that and other activities of daily life there is fine motor activities fine motor activities writing there is playing and buttoning lots of other activities that is very very important dysfunction in the cerebral palsy that has to be managed with very very early age groups at birth most of the time tone pattern is not clear so we should not bother this child is born now this is three year of, three months of the age and what is the type of the cerebral palsy is there the type of the cerebral palsy which be clear at up to the one to two year age groups and we know that when the child is born with the floppy then most of the time this floppy children is going to convert in dyskinetic cerebral palsy but with the tone of the child newborn child or up to the three month of the years this normal or increase they can go into spastic or dystonic cerebral palsy but we know that as the child increases up to seven to eight year age groups with good exercises technique this is past is going to disappear if child does not develop the contracture then child can have develop some decrease of the muscle tone and that can be become the normal and nearly normal muscle tone patterns with aging dyskinetic cerebral palsy the pattern of involuntary movement a uh, tone is fluctuating and uh, depending upon the environment how much there this child is feeling easiness in the society and families how the exercise is going to perform in ataxia unsteadiness increases most of the time but stable for the long time because most of the ataxic cerebral palsy is occurring because of the genetic regions and occurring because of the large damage to the cerebellum so ataxic cerebral palsy persists for long and require longer assistive devices and help from the society and family members we always see this sparsity increases sometime when it is in going to increase it in can increase if child have pain child have fatigue child have anxiety they can have their own because of trauma fracture because of the trauma systemic infection and constipations he is hungry then all this reason is occur that can going to increase spasticity in this child this all this discussion was about the spastic cerebral palsy now dystonic cerebral palsy what is the dystonic cerebral palsy dystonia means twisting repetitive sustained movement in the body that means like this the one part of the body your whole body is twisted gurdan is twisted like that and when were they in the anxiety they are working someone is going to talk the stone pattern is going to increase their more body is going to twist there there is very very they develop very awkward postures and movement sometimes slow sometimes rapid and often it is become painful this involuntary movements trigger by attempt and control movement kuch hum we want to do something this movement is going to increase and more frequently occur when is tired but very very relax when child is sleeping they will have the normal pattern no body abnormal awkward position in the sleeping po postures now come to the other tired core the tired cerebral palsy in this uh, cerebral palsy there is rapid involuntary uh, irregularly random jerky unwanted movements and sometimes slow writhing movement in the body and this writhing movement and uh, repetitive jerky movement more occur during the action during the anxiety during the working uh, what to do and uncontrolled movements occurring with fluctuating tone sometime this body is very very loose and sometime the tone is increase but the deep reflexes will not be increased there will be normals 
and but they all this movement disappeared during the sleep and even in the now ataxic cerebral palsy what the ataxic ataxic children look like this it's like alcohol they will not have the gait pattern proper gait patterns they cannot estimate what the depth is there where we have to put the foot on the grounds the depth perception is the problem with these children facing difficulty in balancing and depth per perception so they are very unsteady and shaky whenever they will walk they walk with very very broad based gait their difficulty in quick movements when one do they take weak movement they cannot do because their whole body is very very shaky their balance is very very poor there is vestibular system is not working there is cerebellum system is not working and the intention tremor in body movements where they have hand start to tremble while deliberating reaching for the something whenever they reaching for something the hand will start tremoring why to what is the need to identify the cerebral palsy why because this type of the cerebral palsy will decide the treatment plan what kind of treatment is needed for the different kind of cerebral palsy as no the dystonic dyskinetic ataxic cerebral palsy will never require any surgical intervention so far as the orthopedic surgeries no but the spastic cerebral palsy children only in 10 to 20% children can require orthopedic surgical intervention but only after to 7 to 8 year age groups spastic cerebral palsy can is can be managed in much better way they require good quality activity oriented task oriented therapy along with some time stretching and strengthening exercises but the dystonic dyskinetic and this ataxic cerebral palsy require more of the balancing exercises more of the tone reducing exercises more of the relaxation exercises more of the meditations what are the prognosis is also decided by the type of the cerebral palsy as i told you the spastic cerebral palsy can be managed in much better way dyskinetic ataxic cerebral palsy require long term assistive devices long term problem will be there hemiplegic one side upper limb lower limb has the best prognosis have the nearly normal life pattern as the normal population in the society even the diplegic cerebral palsy mild to moderately affected will have the normal life expectancy but quadriplegic spastic cerebral palsy dystonic quadriplegic cerebral palsy can have the lesser life they can have difficult life because dystonic and ataxic cerebral palsy affects severely the whole body the child can have the pain, painful uh, neuropraxia nerve radiation and lots of spondylitic changes can have long term problems we know that we we'll, we will have the will power we can manage everything and with by early intervention by the good kind of therapeutic modalities we can manage more than 80% children and can be given good quality of life in the long term thank you we will have this type of the lecture at every weeks so by hearing this lecture we should understand different type different problem with cerebral palsy we should try to identify the problem in your child write down on the piece of paper then in diary and discuss with your uh, specialist so that you can understand each and every problem with cerebral palsy then you can manage in much better way thank you namaskar सेरबल पालसी में अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारे YouTube चैनल त्रिशला फाउंडेशन और जे जैन ट्रिपल नाइन को सब्सक्राइब करें